the Battle of Kasserine Pass took place during the Tunisia Campaign of World War II in February 1943. Kasserine Pass is a two miles wide gap in the Grand Dorsal Chain of the Atlas Mountains in west central Tunisia. The Axis forces led by General Field Marshal Owen Rommel, were primarily from the Africa Corps Assault Group, elements of the Italian Centauro Armoured Division and two Panzer Divisions detached from the 5th Panzer Army against Allied forces of the US II Corps and the British 6th Armoured Division, parts of the British 1st Army. The battle was the first big engagement between American and German forces in World War II. The inexperienced and poorly led American troops suffered heavy casualties and were quickly pushed back over 50 miles from their positions west of Fade Pass. After the early defeat, elements of the U.S. II Corps, reinforced by British reserves, rallied and held the exits through mountain passes in western Tunisia, defeating the Axis offensive. The U.S. Army instituted sweeping changes from unit level organization to the replacing of commanders. Background American and British forces landed at several points along the coast of French Morocco and Algeria on November 8, 1942, during Operation Torch. This came only days after General Bernard Montgomery's breakout in the east following the Second Battle of El Alamein. In response, German and Italian troops were ferried in from Sicily to occupy Tunisia, one of the few easily defended areas of North Africa, and only one night sail from bases in Sicily. This short passage made it very difficult for Allied naval vessels to intercept Axis transports, while air interdiction proved equally difficult as the nearest Allied airbase to Tunisia, at Malta, was over 200 miles distant. The run for Tunis in November and December 1942, was an attempt to reach Tunis before German and Italian reinforcements arrived. Because of the poor road and rail communications, only a small, Divisional-sized Allied force could be supplied and an excellent defensive terrain, small numbers of German and Italian troops were sufficient to defeat the attempt. The Allied build-up continued, more aircraft became available and new airfields in eastern Algeria and Tunisia became operational, resulting in greater success in stopping the flow from Europe of Axis men and equipment into Tunis and Bizerta but a sizable force had already come ashore. On January 23, 1943, the 8th Army took Tripoli, Rommel's main supply base. Rommel had planned for this, switching his line of supply to Tunis and intending to block the southern approach to Tunisia from Tripoli at Garba S. The Marath Line, which the French had built to protect against an Italian attack from Libya was a line of antiquated French blockhouses, which in no way measured up to the standards required by modern warfare. Allied troops had already crossed the Atlas Mountains and had set up a forward base at 4D, in the foothills on the eastern arm of the mountains, an excellent position to thrust east to the coast, split the Axis forces in southern Tunisia from the forces further north, and cut the line of supply to Tunis. Prelude. Equals 4D pass equals. Elements of the 5th Panzer Army reached the Allied positions on the eastern foot of the Atlas Mountains on January 30. The 21st Panzer Division met French troops at 4D and despite excellent use of the French 75mm guns, which caused heavy casualties among the German infantry, the defenders were easily forced back. U.S. artillery and tanks of the 1st Armored Division then entered the battle, destroying some enemy tanks and forcing the remainder into what appeared to be a headlong retreat. The 1st Armoured Division fell for a ruse which had been successful against British forces and when the Panzers reached their old positions, with U.S. armour in hot pursuit, a screen of German anti-tank guns opened fire, destroying nearly all the American tanks. A U.S. forward artillery observer whose radio and landlines had been cut by shell fire recalled. It was murder. They rolled right into the muzzles of the concealed 88s and all I could do was stand by and watch tank after tank blown to bits or burst into flames or just stop, wrecked. Those in the rear tried to turn back but the 88s seemed to be everywhere. The 21st Panzer Division resumed its advance towards 4D, American infantry casualties were exacerbated by the practice of digging shallow slit trenches instead of foxholes as German tank drivers could easily crush a man inside a trench by driving into it and simultaneously making a half turn. Several attempts were made by the 1st Armoured Division to stop the German advance, 
but all three combat commands found that each defensive position they tried to occupy had already been overrun and they were attacked by German troops with heavy losses. On February 2, the 1st Armored Division was ordered to end its attacks and concentrate to form a reserve. The Germans captured most of Tunisia and the entrances into the coastal lowlands were blocked. The Allies held the interior of the roughly triangular Atlas Range but with the exits blocked this was of little advantage to the Allies. For the next two weeks, Rommel and the Axis commanders further north debated what to do next. Equals Buzid equals. Rommel did not consider the Eighth Army a serious threat since until Tripoli was open Montgomery could maintain only a small force in the south of Tunisia. Ships commenced unloading on February 9 but the port was not fully operational until the end of February. Rommel made a proposal in early February to Commando Supremo, to attack with two battle groups, including detachments from the 5th Panzer Army, toward two U.S. supply bases just to the west of the western arm of the mountains in Algeria. A quick thrust could capture the supplies and disrupt a U.S. attempt to concentrate forces near Tibesa. Arnhem objected and the attack was delayed for a week to agree to Operation Fra One Quarter Links Winder thrust by 5th Panzer Army through the U.S. communications and supply center of Sidi Bouzid. Rommel's forces, 60 miles to the southwest, would conduct Operation Morgenluf to capture Gafsa and advance on Tizer. On February 14, the 10th and 21st Panzer Divisions began the Battle of Sidi Bouzid, about 10 miles west of 4D, in the interior plain of the Atlas Mountains. The U.S. tanks were defeated and the infantry, poorly sighted on three hills and unable to give mutual support, was isolated. A counterattack the next day was easily repulsed and on February 16, the Germans advanced towards Spiedler. After the success at Sidi Bouzid, Rommel ordered the Africa Corps assault group to attack Gafsa on February 15 but on the night before, Anderson ordered the defenders to evacuate Gafsa and make the main defense line the hills around Feriana. Gafsa should not be defended against a big attack. The next day, because of the threat to the southern flank, Anderson obtained Eisenhower's agreement and ordered a withdrawal from the eastern Desail, to the line of the western Desail from Feriana northwards. Early on February 17, Fredendel ordered a withdrawal from Spietla and Feriana. The U.S. II Corps was able to concentrate at the Kasserine and Spieber passes, on the western arm of the mountains. U.S. casualties were 2,546 men, 103 tanks, 280 vehicles, 18 field guns, 3 anti-tank guns and an anti-aircraft battery. Equals Axis plan of attack equals, at this point, there was some argument in the Axis camp about what to do next. All of Tunisia was under Axis control and there was little to do until the 8th Army arrived at Marath. Rommel decided to attack through the Kasserine Pass into the main force of the U.S. II Corps at Tar Copyright Bessa to capture U.S. supplies on the Algerian side of the western arm of the mountains, eliminate the Allied ability to attack the coastal corridor linking Marath and Tunis and threaten the southern flank of the 1st Army. On February 18, Rommel submitted his proposals to Albert Kesselring, who forwarded them with his blessing to the Commando Supremo in Rome. At 13.30 on February 19, Rommel received the Commando Supremo's agreement to a revised plan. He was to have 10th and 21st Panzer Divisions transferred from von Arnhemer Euro unregistered trademark S 5th Panzer Army to his command and attack through the Kasserine and Spieber passes toward Thala and Le Kef to the north clearing the western desail and threatening the 1st Army's flank. Rommel was appalled, the plan dispersed Axis forces and through the passes, would expose their flanks. A concentrated attack on Tar copyright Bessa, while entailing some risk, could yield badly needed supplies, destroy Allied potential for operations into central Tunisia and capture the airfield at Euxley Bains, west of Tar copyright Bessa. Battle in the early hours of February 19, Rommel ordered the Africa Corps assault group from Feriana to attack the Kasserine Pass. The 21st Panzer Division at Spietla was ordered to attack northward through the pass east of Kasserine which led to Spieber and Xor. The Kampgruppe von Broek, the battle group released by von Arnim from 10th Panzer Division, was ordered to concentrate at Spietla, where it would be ready to exploit success in either pass. 
equals Spieber equals, in the Spieber area facing the German armoured advance was the British 6th Armoured Division. Also in the line was the 18th Regimental Combat Team from the US 1st Infantry Division and three battalions of infantry from U.S. 34th Infantry Division. There were also three U.S. Field Artillery Battalions, elements of two British anti-tank regiments and some French detachments. 21st Panzer Division made little progress against the combined firepower of the defending force which had also laid minefields. 21st Panzer was checked and then driven back by February 20. Equals Kasserine equals Defending the pass was a force consisting of the 1st Battalion, U.S. 26th Regimental Combat Team, the U.S. 19th Combat Engineer Regiment, the U.S. 6th Field Artillery Battalion, a tank destroyer battalion and a battery of French artillery. On the hills to their west was French General Welvert's Task Force Welvert comprising a U.S. Ranger and Infantry Battalion, three French Infantry Battalions, two U.S. Field Artillery Battalions, four French artillery batteries and engineer and anti-aircraft detachments. Furthest west was Task Force Bowen, blocking the track from Ferriana towards Tibessa. Between Task Force Bowen and Tibessa to the north was the regrouping U.S. 1st Armored Division although only Combat Command B were fit for combat. The positions in the pass had been placed under Colonel Alexander Stark, commander of the 26th RCT on the night of February 18 and the command named Stark Force. An attempt to surprise the Kasserine defences by the 33rd Reconnaissance Unit into the pass failed and a battalion of Panzer Grenadiers was ordered into the floor of the pass and another ondage Bell Semimar, the hill on its eastern flank and slow progress was made against artillery fire. The tanks of January 8 Panzer Regiment were committed at noon but little further progress resulted against stubborn defence. Rommel decided to commit his units from the 10th Panzer to the Kasserine Pass the next morning in a coordinated attack with the Africa Corps Assault Group, which was to be joined by elements of the Italian 131st Armoured Division Centauro. British reinforcements from the 26th Armoured Brigade had been assembling at Thala and Brigadier Dunphy, making Ford reconnaissance, decided to intervene. The 1st Army headquarters restricted him to sending Gore Force a small combined arms group of a company of infantry, a squadron of 11 tanks, an artillery battery and an anti-tank troop. Brigadier Cameron Nicholson was given command of Nick Force, all units northwest of the pass. During the night, the American positions on the two shoulders overlooking the pass were overrun and at 8.30 a.m. German panzer grenadiers and Italian Basaglari resumed the attack. At 10.00 M. Dunphy judged that Stark Force was about to give way and ordered Gore Force to the Thala side of the pass as elements of the Centauro Division launched their attack towards Tibessa and continued it during the afternoon. At 1 p.m. Rommel committed two battalions from 10th Panzer which overcame the defense. Tanks and Basaglary from the Centauro Division advanced along Highway 13 and overran the 19th Combat Engineer Regiment. The U.S. survivors made a disorganized retreat up the western exit from the pass to Jbel El Hamra, where 1st Armored Division's Combat Command B was arriving. On the exit to Thala, Gore Force slowly leapfrogged back, losing all its tanks in the process, to rejoin the 26th Armored Brigade some 10 miles further back. Equals Jbel El Hamra equals, the Africa Corps assault group began moving along the Hatap River Valley towards Hadra and Tabessa in the early afternoon of February 21 and advanced until they met defenders consisting of the U.S. 1st Infantry Division 16th Infantry Regiment and Combat Command B of the U.S. 1st Armored Division at Jbel El Hamra. The German-Italian force was halted and despite heavy pressure, including air attacks, failed to dislodge the American defenders. Having brought the Axis drive towards Tibessa to a halt generals Robinet and Allen now turned their attention to planning a counterattack that was to take place the next day, February 22. Plans made by both sides were upset by the ongoing battle, and the Axis forces launched another assault on the U.S. position on the morning of the 22. Although the American defenders were pressed hard, the line held, and by mid-afternoon, the U.S. infantry and tanks launched a counterattack that broke the German and Italian force. More than 400 Axis prisoners were taken as the counterattack was pressed into the Africa Corps position. Equals Thala equals. 
Rommel had stayed with the main group of the 10th Panzer Division on the route toward Thala, where the 26th Armored Brigade and remnants of the U.S. 26th Infantry Regiment had dug in on ridges. If the town fell in the southern of two roads from Thala to Tibesa was cut, the U.S. 9th Infantry Division to the north would be cut off and Combat Command B of the 1st Armored Division would be trapped between the 10th Panzer Division and its supporting units moving north along the second road to Tibesa. The combined force fought a costly delaying action in front of Thala, retreating ridge by ridge to the north until by dark, the force held the German attacks just south of the town. The divisional artillery of the U.S. 9th Infantry Division and anti-tank platoons, that had moved from Morocco on February 17, 800 me west, dug in that night. Next day, the front was held mostly by British infantry, with exceptionally strong backing by unified U.S. and British artillery, under Brigadier General Stafford Leroy Owen, the U.S. artillery commander. The British had 36 guns, supported by the Derbyshire Yeomanry and the 17th-21st Lancers. Anderson ordered the 9th Division and its artillery support to Le Kef to meet an expected German attack but U.S. Major General Ernest N. Harman, who had been sent by Eisenhower to report on the battle in the Allied command, instructed the 9th Divisional Artillery to stay behind. On the morning of February 22, an intense artillery barrage from the massed Allied guns forestalled the resumption of the 10th Panzer Division attack, destroying armor and vehicles and disrupting communications. Von Broek, the battle group's commander, decided to pause and regroup but Allied reinforcements continued to arrive. Under constant fire, 10th Panzer waited until dark to retire from the battlefield. Equals withdrawal equals, overextended, available supplies now dwindling, pinned down by the Allied artillery in the pass in front of Thala and now facing U.S. counterattacks along the Hatap River, Rommel realized his attack had been stopped. At Spiba, along the Hatap River and now at Thala, the efforts of the German and Italian forces had failed to make a decisive break in the Allied line. With little prospect of further success, Rommel judged that it would be wiser to break off to concentrate in South Tunisia and strike a blow at 8th Army, catching them off balance while still assembling its forces. He at least had the consolations that he had inflicted heavy losses on his enemy and that the Allied concentrations in the Gafsa Euro Spiatli area had been destroyed. At a meeting at Rommel's Kasserine headquarters on February 23, Kesselring and his chief of staff Siegfried Westphal tried to change Rommel's mind, arguing that there were still possibilities for success. Rommel was adamant. Kesselring finally agreed and formal orders from the Commando Supremo in Rome were issued that evening calling off the offensive and directing all Axis units to return to their start positions. On February 23 a massive U.S. air attack on the pass hastened the German retreat and by late on February 24, the pass had been reoccupied, Feriana was in Allied hands. Sidi Bouzid and Spietla followed soon after. Aftermath Rommel had hoped to take advantage of the inexperience of the new Allied commanders but was opposed by von Arnim, who wanted to conserve strength in his sector, ignored Kesselring's orders and withheld the attached heavy tank unit of 10th Panzer. Rommel felt that most U.S. units and commanders showed their inexperience, losing sight of the broader picture. Rommel was unable to exploit Allied failings due to a lack of forces and freedom of maneuver and the opportunity was missed but praised the 2nd Battalion, 13th Armoured Regiment of the 1st Armoured Division in the defense of Spietler for being clever and well fought. Rommel was later impressed with how quickly U.S. commanders came to understand and implement mobile warfare and also praised U.S. equipment, British experience has been put to good use in American equipment. Of particular interest to the Germans was the sturdy M3 armored half-track and for some time after the battle, German units deployed large numbers of captured U.S. vehicles. The Allies studied the results equally seriously. Positioned by senior commanders who had not personally reconnoitred the ground, U.S. forces were often located too far from each other for mutual support. It was also noted that American soldiers tended to become careless about digging in exposing their positions, bunching in groups when in open view of enemy artillery observers, and positioning units on topographic crests, where their silhouettes made them perfect targets. Too many soldiers, exasperated by the rocky soil of Tunisia, 
were still digging shallow slit trenches instead of deep foxholes. The 1st Armoured Division had also apparently not learned lessons from British forces on the receiving end of German anti-tank and screening tactics, though others in the U.S. Army were well aware of the deception. The Allies were also unable to prevent the Germans from attaining air superiority over the battlefield, limiting effective Allied air reconnaissance and allowing relentless German bombing and strafing attacks that disrupted Allied attempts at deployment and organization. Attacks by the Luftwaffe in close support of German ground offensives often neutralized American attempts to organize effective defensive artillery fire. General Dwight D. Eisenhower began restructuring the Allied command, creating the 18th Army Group, to tighten the operational control of the three Allied nations involved and improve their coordination. Lloyd Friedendel was relieved by Eisenhower and sent home. The custom amongst theater commanders of transferring senior commanders who had failed in battle to training commands at home, did not improve the reputation or morale of the latter. Home commands were saddled with disgraced commanders reluctant to advocate radical improvements in training programs, which like the commanders had contributed to U.S. Army reverses in North Africa. Eisenhower found through Major General Omar N. Bradley and others that Fredendel's subordinates had lost confidence in him and Alexander told U.S. commanders, I'm sure you must have better men than that. Fredendel took the blame but Anderson, the first army commander, was judged to be at fault for the failure to concentrate Allied armored units and integrate forces which subsequently disintegrated into disjointed units. When Fredendel disclaimed all responsibility for the poorly equipped French 19 Corps and denied French requests for support, notably when under pressure at 4D, Anderson allowed the request to go unfulfilled. Anderson was also blamed for dispersing the three combat commands of U.S. 1st Armored Division, despite the objections of Orlando Ward the divisional commander. Irwin became a successful divisional commander and went on to higher command, as did Cameron Nicholson of Nickforce. Allied commanders were given greater latitude to use their initiative, to make decisions and to keep forces concentrated. They were also urged to lead their units from the front, and to keep command posts well forward, unlike Fredendel who had rarely visited the front line. On March 6, Major General George S. Patton was temporarily removed from planning for the Allied invasion of Sicily to command two corps. Bradley was appointed assistant corps commander and moved up to command of two corps when Patton returned to planning for Sicily. Fredendel was reassigned to the United States and several other commanders were removed or promoted out of the way. Patton was not known for hesitancy and did not bother to request permission when taking action to support his command or other units requesting assistance. During the advance from Gafsa, General Alexander had given detailed orders to Patton, afterwards changing to core mission several times. Once beyond Maynasi, Alexander again gave orders Patton considered excessively detailed. From then on, Patton simply ignored those parts of mission orders he considered ill-advised on grounds of military expediency and or a rapidly evolving tactical situation. Efforts were made to improve the integration of immediate artillery and air support, which had been poorly coordinated. While U.S. artillery response times improved dramatically, coordinating close air support was not achieved until Operation Overlord over a year later. American anti-aircraft artillery began reforms, having learned that, while Stuka dive bombers were vulnerable to .50 in anti-aircraft machine gun fire, field units and field artillery needed protection from aerial attack, in one division, 95% of air attacks were concentrated on its artillery. Emphasis was also placed on keeping units concentrated and two corps began to use divisions as divisions and by the invasion of Sicily, their forces were considerably stronger. See also List of World War II battles, North African Campaign Timeline Notes equals Footnotes equals equals Citations equals References Further reading External links Facing the Fox in the Kasserine Pass, Entry in the Leaders and Battles Database, Kasserine Pass Battles, Staff Rides Background Materials A Euro Collection Primary Sources and Analysis of the Battle Compiled by the United States Army Center of Military History, Battle for Kasserine Pass, First Armored Division were ambushed by the Africa Corps at Sidi Bouzid. World War II Magazine
Retrieved February 12, 2012.